I'm the Commissar, this is Forge Alliance Forever, and you have no excuse to miss this game, which is 4v4 ladder action. It features a range of players, some with less experience and some with a little more, and it's on the map Miracle, which we'll be talking about in just a little bit. But no other announcements to make today, so let's go straight in and see who's playing. So, as is tradition in a ladder game, we have a hot team and a cold team. The hot team are down here in the southeast, and the cold team are up here in the northwest. Starting on the flank for a hot team, this is Ozzelot. He is 716 rated, he's Cybron, and he's in brown. In the centre for Hot Team, we have Boy34174, whom I think we're going to have to call Boy today, because I'm not going to say 34174 each time. He is 1004 rated, he's Cybron, and he is in Burgundy. On the other flank for Hot Team, we have L to the Eon, who, infuriatingly, isn't. He's not Eon, he's UEF. He is 1,348 rated, he's today's highest rated player, and he's in orange. And in the rearguard air position for Hot Team, this is Fairy Tail. Now Fairy Tail has opened first air and then built no power, so let's hope he's got enough not to power store. This could be a little dodgy, but I think he's managed to pick up a bit of tree reclaim, and so that should save him from the store. Also, he sent his com to assist before finishing the VMEXs, which means that he's okay. Good work from Fairy Tail. Now over to the other side. On this flank, we have Latush, except Latush isn't in his base. He's already up there, having not even finished building his mexes. I'm sure he'll do that in just a moment. Latush is today's lowest rated player at 528. He's Cybron, and he is in Cyan. In the centre, this is Unique, who we see... where's he gone? There he is. He's already heading towards that tasty pile of Reclaim in the centre. He is 1194 rated. He is Seraphim in Dark Blue. On the other flank, we have... where's he gone? Can't even see his com. Oh, there he is. He's way away helping Unique in the middle. This is Turbina. He's 1247 rated. He's also Cybron. And he is in Mauve. And last but not least, for Code Team, we have Mikhail XDHE, who I'm going to be calling Mikhail today. He's 879 rated. He's also Cybron. And he's in Baby Blue. Now, we immediately have to look here, in the middle, where we have two cold comms versus one hot comm, as Turbina and Unique join to try and push a boy away from this heap of reclaim. Now, if you look at the map, we see that there are patches of reclaim across the middle, but by far the biggest is here. And Unique has been setting up PDs to drive away boy while Turbina does the fighting. Now another thing to note about this map is that it's made of channels. We have one, two, three, four, five channels across here. And the players have generated such that we have the highest rated player on each team going anti-clockwise against the lowest rated player on each team going clockwise. So this could be very much a matter of who wins their side first or perhaps who wins their side more conclusively either way. We're going to have to see that. Over here, Latush is all greed, no defense. Look at this, this is only engineers. He hasn't built a single combat unit. And that means that these tank and scout combinations from L are going to be able to wreak havoc. A little quick pause going on there from Turbina by the looks of things. So, here we have this NG probably about to die, and this NG, and quite a lot of the mexes may be picked off. Where is Latish Defense? His com is walking back, but that won't be enough to save a lot of the units here. 
and he's bringing in more, realising that there's just nothing to stop it. There are only engineers from Latish, and that land factory has stopped building now. He's putting up some more, and there are Mantis queued up, but that's a long time to wait, as he loses Mexes here, he loses engineers. He loses engineers and Mexes even back here, so this is just economic damage really going down. On the other side, we have an similar raid being attempted by Oz, but Mikhail has brought his com all the way from the back and is defending this flank, while Turbina and Unique are doing their stuff in the middle. He will have to be careful about a push from Oz through the middle, but Turbina is building spam to hold it there. Meanwhile, how's that raid doing from L? Well, it's not only run past and done a lot of damage to Latush, but it's getting into Mikhail's eco at the back here. So this is an amazing start for a hot team, as the damage is just being done. There are some tanks here, well, Mantis, coming out for Mikhail, and he will probably be able to mass enough to hold this small raid off. And we're getting a couple of uh, tanks out from Latush as well, but it could be too little too late, and look how much he's lost up here. Latush is far, far behind on Eco 19, while everybody else is doing pretty well. However, we have to change our focus here to the middle, where Fairy has come forward with the gun to help out Boy, who's in the middle of the upgrade himself. And Turbina has relocated over here to help defend against Oz, so Unique is going to be on his own against two gun comms, which could be a problem for him. He has these point defences, but with the gun, Fairy just outranges them and can pop them and Unique is not very close to getting the gun himself. If I were Fairy, I would be pushing forward and trying to force a cancer, especially now that Boy is up here with the gun as well in support. But Unique has already reclaimed a decent amount of this, and Cold Team are a thousand mass ahead, and if we look at the reclaim, we can see that that's where it's coming from. Despite the losses that Latish took to his eco, Cold team have just got more because Unique's been in here in the middle all the time. But Boy is pushing forward with the gun and spam. Unique will be able to finish without being forced to cancel. He has got units coming in his support. But this is must be feeling a little bit hairy for him. However, he finishes the gun. Is he going to be able to force Boy back? Boy has a lot of spam coming in, but with Fairy getting the other Eon gun upgrade. He's not going to be supported for now, and Unique falls back, but he is seeding the middle to Boy. Nice little push from Latush, trying to repay the damage that he took from L, and L is forced to bring his com across here in order to defend. L is still naked, and Latush with the gun upgrade will have a chance to push in, but he's holding off for now. He's going for stealth. He wants to be absolutely sure that he's going to have the advantage. Back to the middle, though. And now that Fairy is bringing his common pin support, Boy can really push Unique back. Meanwhile, Turbina finishes the gun, and he looks like he's ready to push in on Oz. However, these two comms are now in a position to scoop up a lot of the reclaim that was left in the middle and redress the balance, and meanwhile, thanks to the eco damage that Latish took, Hot Team are now well ahead on generated eco 130 to 110. So in comes Turbida. Let's get that so we can actually see the icons. There we go. In comes Turbida. He's got the gun, and Oz doesn't. He's got spam, and Oz has a bit, but not as much. So, Turbina might actually be able to get quite a lot done here. How deep is he going to go? Oz taking fire. And with this amount of spam, Turbina might actually be able to push and kill Oz, who has no upgrades, not much spam, he does have T2 production, but I don't know if he's got any T2 engineers to throw up T2PD. 
However, he has managed to evade Turbina's gunfire for a bit, which will give him a chance to regroup and take out some of the spam. Now, Turbina should know, and probably would have had he not had to do a lot of micro at this time, to lead with his comm so he tanks a bit of the damage and stops losing as much of the spam. However, he is taking Mexes out in Oz's main base, so that's absolutely 100% worth it. And point defences are going up, but with the gun that should not be a problem, and Turbina is getting a nice lot of NG kills. He falls back a bit. Meanwhile, he's massing spam on this side, and Mikhail's comm is also here, so he's going to be getting eco damage on the mexes down here for Oz. Overall, a delicious raid from Turbina. On the other side, though, L is pushing in again, and this time he's got pillars, and there's no tech at all on the field for Latush. So, on the left, Turbina has the spam, but Oz has the tech. He's getting some rhinos out, and he, we mustn't forget that Fairy is bringing his comm down to sandwich Turbina. On the right, we have this rhino push coming round the top from L, and that may be a bit of a problem for Latush, who, as we mentioned, doesn't have the tech to stop it. However, the HQ is now under fire, but Fairy has brought spectres in, and those spectres were force Turbina to fall back to where he's got some support. Now Ella's pillars are moving on further around while more units come in and he's setting up triad point defence to hold the position here. Intis from Mikau take out the gunship and Corsairs come in and hit Fairy taking him down into the yellow. Turbina pushes He's getting some damage, but he decides to worry about the Rhino spam instead, and that's understandable. Meanwhile, look at these pillars from L. They're really getting the damage done. Mikhail needs to pick up this gunship and send it to fight them. Fairy falls back, but the Corsairs are coming in again, and look at that. He is taking quite some hits. Now, he has... He has not really got an answer to this at the moment. He's just letting the Corsairs fly away for free. Finally, those gunships are coming in to defend against the pillars. But they might yet claim some damage. Like this T2 Mex for Unique could be a casualty. Actually, it looks like, thanks to the point defense, they're going to survive. However, Ferry has been driven back. He's putting up anti air now, but that's not going to stop this land push. Here in the north, Latush is pushing in with basically just his comm. Now on the one hand, sure, he's got gun, he's got stealth, and a gun stealth comm easily takes out T2 point defences, but L has a gun comm, L has a pillar in support and will probably soon have more, and L has more point defences to fall back to, so Latush is going to have to be very, very careful. And it looks to me like there's no way that Latush gets out of this one alive. He is deep down into the yellow, Ella's still in the green. Sure, he's regenerating a bit faster, but I don't think that's going to make much of a difference when there's this much. But we have units coming in from Latush to save the day. And Ella is a bit worried about that. He falls back, he falls away from them there was a good chance that had those units done enough damage L could have died in Latish Combomb and L is still creeping with these point defences and that would definitely force Latish back but at least he has survived oh that's cheeky that is super cheeky but nice reclaim off from Latish and he'll get that back soon enough In the middle, we have Boy under pressure from MMLs and tanks, but Boy's got a T2 army of his own, Boy's got a gun com, and these MMLs have nothing to support them, so I think Boy's easily going to hold that position. Meanwhile, we have a T2 
Titan Raid coming in. It's already getting some damage against Latush, and it could come in and get some damage against Unique back here. Because why come in and do damage here when you can hit the Ecos of the higher rated players like this has already been damaged. And that mix could quite easily be claimed. We do have Ilshis in defence from Unique. And as I have so often said, Ilshis are the most delicious of Tech 2 land units. However, they're still Corsairs from Mikhail and they're only going to claim that one mix, I think, these Titans, because with this point defense here, this point defense here, and those Corsairs and those Ilshis, I don't think that Titan's going to get anything more done, and indeed it isn't, it burns up. But we've still got another one coming around the top, causing more trouble for Latush. In the south, though, we have a huge push from Turbina, and Mikhail is still bringing his common in support, which is pretty brave, given that we're definitely into the T2 and almost the T3 phase, and Mikhail is just naked. He's wandering around, all his cybern bits hanging out, with nothing to cover them, apart from a bunch of spam from Turbina. It's like one of those old 70s films where you know, bits of um, scenery were placed in amusing places to obscure what would otherwise have been risque shots. However, look at this, there are those Corsairs coming back and trying to hit Fairy Tail again. They do some damage, but Fairy Tail has a bunch of Swifties and the Swifties are more than enough to stop the damage from Code Team. Over here, there's still a Titan being a nuisance and it's taking out multiple mexes, two T2 mexes out for Latush, again hurting his eco pretty bad, but Oz has also lost a lot of eco and so that might help balance matches up, however Hot Team are still in the eco lead. Boy is massing T2 both in the middle and over here to help out Fairy and Oz. Meanwhile, Unique has brought his com forward. He is a tough com. He has gun. He has nano. He has T2. He has 15,500 hit points, a decent amount of regen, and a nice big gun. And he's also building this turret, which will go up long before this turret from L. However, it doesn't shoot the NG, which is what I would have shot first. It shoots these titans. And I think that this turret is going to go up unopposed. Which would be a mistake from Unique, but I'm sure he's busy microing elsewhere. And that this is just targeting what it sees first. And in come the Titans. Now Unique really needs to react now. He's going to lose these turrets. He needs to do some shooting. There we are. He's getting some damage done, but some of this firebase is going to be damaged. Meanwhile, what else have we got going on? Well, we have Fairy absolutely doubling down on being a frontline com. He's got the gun. He, he's got the extended range on the Eon gun, and he's getting shield. And Oz is finally getting the gun upgrade. Not, I think, because he wants to be aggressive, but because he's going to have to be. What else have we got? Well, Unique is staying forward. He is continuing to put up his PDs and reclaim the wreckage that they left. But that might not last because we have a Ravager going up for L. Now, to my newer viewers or people less familiar with the game, Ravagers are the only T3 point defense, only UEF get these. Unique will need to find a different answer than a point defense creep because once these start going up, the Seraphim have no answer in the form of turrets, and as if that weren't enough, L is bringing his Gun Nano Com in. So on the one hand, Gun Nano T2 beats Gun Nano, obviously, but with the Ravager as well to lend support, and there it is opening up, I think that Unique might just be driven back. And Boy is also sending spam in in support. And suddenly Unique doesn't have any spam. He's got one turret left. This could actually be curtains for Unique. And that will be a lovely pickup for L if he could manage it. 
as Unique takes the damage. But Ella's falling back. If I were Ella, I would have pushed in on this. I don't think you've got enough without your com to seal that deal. And as Unique brings in a force of Ilshi's and T1 spam, it becomes clear that he does not, in fact, have enough to seal the deal and kill Unique, and Unique is going to defend. Good work from Unique. I think it's time we had a look at the Ecos, and the Ecos are remarkably even. Code teams back in the lead, but only by the tiniest bit. How is balance looking? That's beautiful for Mika, look at that. He'll need to spend a bit more of the mass soon, but having just that little amount in storage, having a bit of power overflow, I love that. And indeed he was spending it. Same from Turbina. Unique needs a little more power, but maybe that's just because he's built so much, a decent amount of storage there. No, he is on the breadline, but that is also beautiful balance. So, so I am loving most of Code Team's balance. Latos, however, does not have the eco to be spending that much, and he's only on 30% efficiency. He'll need to reclaim some of these mixes in order to do something about that. And to give him his deal, he is. He's dropping up here to pick up this mix with that NG. How about Hot Team? L is spending massively. What's he spending on? He's got some going into these T3 mixes, he's putting up more mixes, and he's also building heavily assisted T3 units, but still, that's a lot to be spending when you're only bringing in 65 per tick. Lovely balance from Fairy Tail. Boy, spending even more than L, that's why, look at this, look at the sheer amount of build power focused on this T2 mix, and Oz also quite well balanced. So get certainly very well balanced given how much eco he's lost to Turbina's assaults. Now, Fairy is building strats, but that might be a risk as he doesn't really have air control. There's a strat here out from Mikael and it is supported by a decent bunch of these um, ASFs and this could be pretty mean. Boom! Look at that beautiful hit. That strat has 12 kills. Sure, they're only a bit of spam, but that strat just got them for free. And what is Fairy going to do about it as the air player? He's got Swifties, but Mikko has ASF, so that is no contest. Mikko would take that fight if Fairy tried to start it. And what's this? This is a lot of labs from Mikhail, and to be honest, I do not like this play. Lab raids could be good. They're good for just getting in quickly, raiding, getting out, but where are they going to get past? Because there's T2 point defences here, here, and here, and they are all Cyber and T2 point defences. Now, we mock Cyber and T2 point defences as just tickling at the enemy, trying to tickle them to death, but these are labs. They have 90 hit points each, that is nothing, and a bit of a tickle, they're going to die, so it's going to take a lot for that lab force to do anything, so as a stratagem for Mikael, I'm afraid I don't like it. This is much better, this is a nice big heap of Othiums from Unique, backing up his now shielded forward firebase. But we do have T3 RT, T3 mobile RT demolishers raining fire down on it. And if Unique wants to hold on to this, he's going to need more shields and he's going to need demolishers of his own. And in comes that lab raid. And if I hated it before, I hate it even more now because it is just a trickle. And when it comes into the range of this Cerberus, which you can see it over there, look, it's just going to pick them off one by one. They're just they just, each one walks into range on its own and dies. This is just sending labs to their doom. This is a massacre. So, yes, that lab raid, not worth it. Didn't like it, hated it. And I entreat Mikhail to try something else. I actually did it with that strat. That was nice. I like that strat. That strat is now over here. It's got a few more kills. And it can come in. It's also not very damaged. It can come in and hit some of these mixes, like... That would be a lovely place to hit with that strat. 
He's tried to hit this Gunter artillery, but it's not quite enough. He hasn't killed it. But I, as this fight comes down in the middle here, Unique deciding to hold back a bit because there is enough T3 to make him think twice. We saw a notification for our first experimental, and that is a monkey lord out from Turbina, which we can see stalking forward there, and this could be a real game changer. At the moment, all the flank successes have come from L taking out latter stuff, though that might not last, because look at this force coming forward from L. That's not actually that bad, and it could do some damage. Actually, I had to take that back. There's a big heap of titans coming in here. And that is going to easily stop Latish push. The monkey has been seen. And what does Hot Team really have in response to this monkey lord? Well, it has strats from Fairy. Three of them. In they come. The monkey takes a bit of damage, but the ASFs are on hand to defend, and it looks like Mikha's micro is better. Looks like only one strat, maybe make that zero strats are getting another pass. More. Oh, I know, I take that back. I'm absolutely lying. There's still a huge heap of them around. And Turbina falls back the monkey rather than lose them to the strat. However, the strats are going down. And that monkey could push again, especially given the number of loyalists backing it up. And things could be a little bit shaky for the hot team on this western southern flank. And the monkey's advancing. It's backed up by a T3. Sure, there's a nice little raid going on here, which might have been an attempt to distract it, but that's not going to distract it enough. Oz's base is under threat. He's trying to get Nano, but that won't be enough to save him from a monkey if the monkey chooses to shoot him. And the monkey does choose to shoot him. Okay, maybe it doesn't? Boom, it does. And Oz is our first ejection at 26 minutes 26. Meanwhile, Fairy is also under attack. His shield is down, he's surrounded by loyalists. He's not going to make it out. Boom! So suddenly, that's two kills in favour of Code Team. A base has been utterly mashed, and look at this. This is beautiful. We already have Mex's defences in Oz's base being jumped on by Turbina. I love that. He's immediately doubling down on his win, and he's trying to make something of it. The monkey has actually fallen back to try and deal with stuff over here. I don't think it was needed. This hot could have run down here, and that monkey would have done better just diving straight into Fairy's old base, which now, of course, has been inherited by L, and trying to lay down some hurt on it. We have spearheads from L, T3 mobile missile launchers, trying to put the damage down, and they will be good at breaking through these shields. We don't have any TMD queued up yet, and that shield needs to be expanded so it actually covers the mixes. I don't think that Turbine is going to hold on to this for long, especially if that monkey just sits there doing nothing while shenanigans are going down all around the rest of the map. Meanwhile, Latush is advancing. He's now got Gun and Nano, but this is a significant T3 force, and Latush does not have enough to fight this. This is bold. Latush might be just going to die if he walks too far forward. Now, it very much looks like, like El is trying to keep him alive so that Turbina doesn't inherit all this. But it does mean that Latush comes forward and gets a bit of reclaim down. And he's just going to hold position there. I think he might fall back when these shots start landing on him. And indeed he does. Now, this monkey is again coming forward to add pressure to Boy. 
boy is building a monkey of his own. But this monkey has a big bunch of vets. If it gets another vet before that monkey finishes, then... Oh, but we have Restorers out from L. Who has, of course, inherited Eon Tech from Fairy. And those Restorers really could make the difference. However, at the moment, Mikau is on point with good air defence. This monkey falls back a bit rather than facing the Restorers. But Boy isn't going to give him a choice, and so he engages. With this Restorer threat, I think Turbina will definitely need to mix some T3 Mobile AA into the mix to support his monkey. But that monkey has got its fourth vet, and it will be fighting Boy's monkey. These Restorers might make all the difference. However, they have been called away. What's happening up on the other flank? Well, we just have bombardment of Ella's actual base while Ella's com sits here and takes the occasional pot shot. It looks like Latush might have overextended into these Percy's a bit. Boom, down he goes. Meanwhile, on the left, those forces there are lining up for a bit of a monkey knife fight. And in they come. The lasers beam out and Turbina's monkey, thanks to its veterancy, wins the day. But it's going to have to watch out. Those restorers are now getting in larger numbers and the couple of ASFs that Mikkel has are no longer enough to stop it. And there are a couple of flak turrets back here. But I don't know. Okay, looks like that monkey is going to stay alive. And this gunship is just going to die this way though. Because what's it going to do against a huge horde of restorers? Well, I will tell you, it is actually going to die. And L now has a GC coming in to join the fight. Which, given how much damage this monkey has taken, should be an easy win. And even if it weren't, it's got those restorers to back it up. But it's not going to be that easy because we have this second monkey coming in from Turbina. And of course, being Cybern and with five vets, that original monkey has healed quite a lot. Now, L has given the GC over to Boy. And Boy is charging in, which is what I think he was expected to do with it but sure he's gonna get a couple of kills but against both monkeys I don't know if he's going to survive just because of the sheer amount of DPS that two monkey lords put out or he would if this one was actually able to get its laser in on the action which it finally is Ooh, did you see that that was close but both monkeys survive and the GC is dead. Like, those restorers could just come in, kill them both and fly out. But that's not where El is focused right now, because now that this base is owned by... Well, it's been given over to Mikhail, actually. Now it's been owned by Mikhail, there is the worry that it will be contributing quite a lot to the air economy on the cold side, and so El has come in to crush it. And it's got a decent amount of T2 production, and Unique is sending in his Othiums to help, but this is a shielded force of Percy's and Titans, and I don't think that's going to be very easy for Cold Team to stop. But, thing is, Cold Team now have five bases, and Hot Team only have three, and also Cold Team have a bunch of experimentals, and Hot Team don't. So, which way do you think it's going to go, my dudes? Tell me in the comments below because it looks like it's very soon going to be 4v4 bases again but we've got a nice emplacement being put up here by Unique in order to defend from this push getting any deeper and these Othiums, these Othiums need to be less of a trickle and more of a force and maybe they need to mass up back here even so L is worried about it and L is falling back Still no combat down in the south. Hot, hot team still only a teensy bit ahead and they just dropped behind there. 
Maybe that was reclaimed, so maybe it's Core Team who have the Eco Lead. That wouldn't surprise me with all of this. Look, they've got these mixes up to T2 already, which is nice. So, it, I would say that Core Team would have the Eco Lead if it weren't for Hot Team's reclaim. Because look at all of this. The fight goes down, and it looks like uh, it's going to be broken by the combined forces of Othiums and forced to fall back with what little he has left. <clears throat> and this is a decent sized reclaim field, that's what, there you go, 15, 20,000 reclaim? But the restorers are coming in to seal the deal and there's basically zero anti-air in here so this is just going to be shredded by that force of restorers. Okay, that's a lot of restorers. We are looking at 37 restorers. That is insane. I don't think there's anything on the board that's got a chance of stopping that. I think he probably, if he wanted to sacrifice them, could just come in here, kill Unique, kill Tabina, and sure, not many will get out, but that would be an immense win. He is coming in and he is shredding some eco. And we are going to watch these restorers as they go to absolute town on the eco in Mikhail's base. Now as the air player, uh, um, Mikhail needs these P-Gens and so they are very wisely being targeted by a big heap of restorers and down they go. But we have to watch out for this XP push on the other side, the classic Mega Monkey combo, the Spider and the Crab, which sounds like something out of Game of Thrones. The Spider and the Crab as they come pushing in onto Boy's flank. I don't like this though, these spiders wandering off in this direction, they need to support that Mega. And look at this, look at these mexes from Mikhail just being utterly crushed. <coughs> Mikhail is fleeing to unique space and Sam's are going up in profusion so those restos would have a difficult time of it doing any damage here but I mean they've done the damage they need to do they have crushed every piece of eco in Mikhail's base and those restorers given that there's now nothing that the air player can do on Cold Team are going to be almost uncontested that is absolutely brutal And the experimental assault forces its way in on boy, while on this side, the restos are almost dead, but there's a land push also coming in from L. Turbina loses a monkey to the restos. The Mega is under fire from the restos, and the Mega really, really needs to target in here, but unfortunately, it's just being retreated and I think Turbina is going to lose it for no real gain. I mean, sure, he's trying to get it back to the flak back here, but at what cost, my dude, at what cost? And this looks like a fatty that we have now bombarding the front of Unique's base. And sure, this is all designed to defend against restorers. What's he got to stop a fatty? I will tell you, my dudes, he has nothing to stop a fatty. And the Mega goes down. This monkey will also go down. So El now just has a whole army in Mecha's old base. There's no way they're getting this back. And it looks like from where the early pressure did so much damage to Hot Team, Cold Team are now facing the brunt of the attack. There is a chicken out for Unique. But if that fatty just kites it, that chicken just dies and indeed it does look at that nice movement there from L while the forces that he has here are pushing in from the north a d direction which until recently would have been the safest for poor old unique and the chicken is just getting kited it's come far enough out that the restos can come in and eat it with no problem whatsoever. That's gonna die. On the left, 
the massacre of Unique's base. On the right, it looks like we're going to have a monkey face off, but Turbinus is very damaged. And watch this we have a nuke nearly loaded in Boy's base, which he snuck up during this time. The monkey comes back and engages the other from behind, possibly one of the least expected ways that one might engage a monkey, and also in the game. But Turbina has another one to come in and defend, and I think Turbina is going to be able to hold back this attack just about. But what he's not going to be able to hold back is this. Look at the fat boy fire. The restorers have been driven away by these Sams, but the fat boy is not counted by the Sams, and that is going to be a lot of damage. Sneaky little Percy Raid has come all the way around the top here and is in the back of I've forgotten his name, Turbina, that's it, in the back of Turbina's base. But we really have to look over here, and in fact it's choosing to join the absolute multi way sandwich on Unique and now Mikkel as well, given that Mikkel has retreated back here. I mean ideally, I guess for defence they'd want T2 artillery, but T2 artillery is expensive, and okay, Mikkel's, Mikkel's finished a mega here somehow. It got damaged by the restos earlier, but that's still a decent number of hit points on it, and it might do the D. This fatty is falling back, but if we look over here, we see why. It's grouping up with its friend, and now we have the fatty brothers. Double fatty action to me, to you, and all that. Except it's all from me and from you because from them to Unique and the thing that's being sent from the fatties to Unique is a big bunch of artillery shells and that was incredibly laboured but not as hard work as these guys are going to have to do to save the situation. The Mega's coming in and immediately the fatties just kite away because the fatties outrange the Mega, and as long as they can stay out of its range. And did you remember that nuke, my dudes? There's that nuke, and this could hurt quite a lot. The Mega does get in range, and L does need to retreat these boys, but... Boom! Mikael is toast. Unique is toast. The Mega is mostly toast. Actually, is Unique toast? No, Unique is only on the outside of the blast and he, his comm is still alive. But his comm and what base? His comm and what army? Unique has nothing as the Mega dies to Fatboy Fire and suddenly things look very, very poor indeed for Cold Team. As we have Unique just standing around um, with nothing to do and even less to lose, to quote Meatloaf, and Turbina is here with just one base in this corner and sure, he's got XP's, but L has more. He's got some units, but L has more. He's got some eco, but L has a lot more. Is he power stored? No, he's not. That's just what he's got. I suppose the nuke took out so much of the eco here. And this restorer cloud looks utterly unstoppable. Surely it's all over. Surely the writing is on the wall. The fat lady is gearing up to sing. Or that sort of colourful metaphor. And in this case the colour is orange. Look at it. The map is all orange. There's a GC pushing in down here. And GC beats Monkey. There are these fatties bombarding up here. I don't think Unique's got long to survive under that fatty fire. And I also don't think that Turbina's base has got too long to survive under this restorer fire. It was a noble de defence from Turbini. He kept the pressure up on Boy for as long as he could, but unfortunately, when the other flank cracked, 
down he went. Unique has been taken out and Turbina is all on his own. The Rustos are swarming above him. Everything he does, everything he touches is being turned to ash and Turbina resigns and Hot Team wins the game. Can't wait to watch it next Gaia cast, suggests L. I think that it was L who sent it to me. I'll have to check that. But it, whether or not it's the next Gaia cast, it's today's cast by me, the Commissar. So there you go. What a game, my dudes. It looked to me, I was sure that Turbina was going to win it with the XP pressure in the south. But... L was able to come back with those restorers just in time and save the day. Do you think that Turbina could have won it if he just pushed a little bit harder? Do you think that there was any way back for a color team? Tell me in the comments below. While you're down there, please don't forget to like, subscribe and obey. I'm the Commissar. I will see you next time.